Who is Jesus? Well, if you ask different people that question, you're probably going to get a variety of different answers. In our society today, we see some who claim that Jesus was just a good man, that he did not have any deity about him whatsoever, that he was just a good moral person. Others will look at Jesus and they say, well, no, he wasn't really the son of God, but he was simply a prophet, one of many prophets that were to come. And then others look at Jesus and they say, well, Jesus never existed. Jesus was just a myth. This is something that is a figment of man's imagination. But then there are others who see Jesus in the proper fashion. They see him for who he is. He is the son of God. He is that promised Messiah that the Jews had been searching for for centuries at the time that he came. Whenever we look at our passage for consideration today from the book of Luke chapter 9, verses 18 through 27, we see that in Jesus' day, there were many as well who had conflicting views of who Jesus was. When Jesus asked the disciples who the people thought that he was, they told him that some people believed that he was John the Baptist or that he was Elijah or one of the other Old Testament prophets who had returned from the dead. Well, then moving from just a general question, Jesus then asked a more personal, pointed question. But who do you say that I am? Well, the others were silent, but Peter immediately spoke up and he says, you're the Christ. You're the son of God. Now, it's hard to fully grasp Peter's meaning because we did not grow up in the first century Jewish culture. We may associate the word Christ as more of a name, but originally it was a title. Christ, which comes from a Greek word, has the same meaning as Messiah that comes from a Hebrew word. Both of them mean anointed or the anointed one. The root word for both of these means to sprinkle or rub oil on a person or an object. In the Old Testament, anointing had a very special significance, indicating that the person or object was set aside for a special holy purpose. The Messiah, or the Christ, was a special person that the Jewish people believed that God would one day send as a powerful warrior, as a king to restore the glory of Israel and to drive out the hated Romans. But Jesus made it very clear that that was not his role. That as the Messiah, or as the Christ, he had not come to establish an earthly kingdom. In fact, he said that his kingdom was not of this world. His kingdom was a heavenly kingdom. In fact, what he said must have come as somewhat of a shock because he started to talk about how he was going to suffer and he was going to die and be raised back to life again. This was more like the suffering servant described in Isaiah 52, 13 through 53, 12 and was certainly not what the people were expecting. They were no doubt confused by Jesus' words and never fully understood what Jesus meant until after those things had transpired. But after this, Jesus again changed the subject. He was still talking about suffering, but this time he was referring to his followers. And the meaning of Jesus' words about denying self and taking up a cross is one that is very clear. To bear a cross meant one thing to those in the first century. It meant crucifixion. The condemned person carried the cross to their place of execution. And this is a very powerful metaphor to not be taken lightly. As one writer put it, Jesus has called his followers to cross-bearing discipleship and a willingness to daily sacrifice one's life for Jesus. Jesus' words in verse 24 are clearly paradoxical. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will save it. This thought did not fit with the conventional wisdom of the first century culture. Giving of yourself, self-denial, or sacrificing for others, it just didn't fit with the culture of that day, nor does it fit in with our culture today either. But Jesus was not the type of Christ that the Jewish people were expecting. He came to serve rather than to be served. He expected the same of his followers as well. 
Friends, the Christian life is not about getting, but it's about giving. Or as Jesus put it, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? Friends, we want to thank you for considering these thoughts that we've that we've studied today. And we pray that God blesses you with a wonderful day.